The global trend and the way COVID-19 panned out seems fairly easy for experts to understand. And joining me in the studio now is a statistician that helps analyze the numbers. Charles Edosama has set up a site called the virus tracker axifa.ng. Good morning, Charles, and thank you for joining us. Thank you. Now, let's talk in, in, in terms of percentages and statistics right now. The, de the death rate, number of infections and death rate globally, how would you analyze that now? Um, so currently we can't really see any major patterns with it. Okay. What we are seeing now is basically the countries with the best healthcare are having the highest number of um, death rates. But the good doctor put it in perspective now, right? Maybe the, the, the countries US with the best healthcare, healthcare have the, the worst numbers of death rates. And like what, what could be caused of, of that? Rate. So technically, right, the doctor put a perspective to it now. Maybe the U.S. has a lot of numbers because they are expanding their tests okay. and capacity. So they are getting a lot of numbers. However, as you well know, there's no healthcare that was prepared for any of this. So the, 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 um, the deficiency of product, ventilators and things like that, yes. it's making it very, very difficult to contain. So maybe that's why we're seeing a whole lot of numbers with respect to the healthcare numbers or the death rate numbers right. increasing. Right. But putting it in perspective, you're seeing countries like the UK yeah. having... Let, let's, let's start with the US. The, okay. the, it's, it happens to be the, um, the country with the most confirmed cases yes. right yes, now. Yes, so yes, let, yes, let's yes. talk in terms of numbers, I mean, and death rates and also um, the confirmed cases. Yes. Yeah. So globally, the global average for the death rate is at 5%. Yes. Some countries have way less, some countries have 0 0.2. Some countries have two, some countries have 10. So currently the US is at 2.8%. They have about 300,000 confirmed cases and about 9,000 deaths, giving them, putting them at about 2.8%. 337,310 yes. deaths. Yes. Confirmed cases. Confirmed cases and about 9,600 deaths. Okay. They are having an average of let's say 300 or 500 deaths every day. Some places it's higher, but that's what we're, we're seeing now. Spain is a little bit higher than the global average. They're at about 9.8%. Oh. With, with 130,759 really, yes. confirmed cases yes. and 12,418 deaths. Deaths, yes. Well, Italy is one of the highest in Europe with a confirmed case of 128,000 and 15,000 deaths. That put them at about 12% of death rate. That's times two of the global average um, death rate. So, and again, for, for, for them, we understand that majority of their population yeah, are the age population. So yeah, because I was just going to say, the, the, the difference is quite much, Italy, the US, and then also Spain. And what could be causing that, that difference in, um, in death rate? Yes, you know? the only un underlining factor now we are seeing is age. Uh, either age, more elderly people. Yes, more elderly people or the speed of response. Okay. So some countries like Nigeria responded pretty fast and we've been able to manage it a lot more better than a couple of other countries. Some other countries did not respond as fast as possible. So it had gone full blown before they even started doing the shutdown. So you would then see those numbers keep increasing. In Africa, um, some other countries have very good low numbers with respect to death rate. Nigeria is about is at two percent currently, and we hope it doesn't increase. South Africa is at about zero point six percent. Algeria is one of the highest in Africa with about eleven percent. Um, some other places like Liberia have twenty three percent, but they only have thirteen cases. Uh, but for a um, for an Algeria, Algeria has about um, 1,300 cases, about 1,300 cases, and their death rate is at 11%. That's one of the highest now yes. in Africa. But we're seeing a situation here where we're having countries with um, highest confirmed cases and, and low death rates to countries with lower confirmed cases and higher death rates. Yes, so which is why we're using the percentage. Okay. Because the percentage is helping us put it in perspective, right? So why is this disparity? A couple of health um, consultants around the world are beginning to create hypotheses and say, hey, maybe it's this, maybe it's this, but no one really has any confirmed line to okay. draw and say, hey, this is the connection between the death rate and the number of confirmed cases. So it can be a number of things. So can, we, can we also consider that the health capacity of these countries? Does that also, yes. Is that also a factor to, to, yes, to yes. look into? Yes, yeah. it's, a, it's, 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 it's a very big factor. 
Lagos currently is managing it well because, I mean, there are a whole lot of persons chipping in, a whole lot of persons are making contribution. The Lagos Volunteer Corps is also helping. So, yes, the responsiveness of each of these governments, it's basically the capacity and the responsiveness of each of these governments is basically turning out or playing out here. Yes, that's basically what it is. China did a very fantastic job, mm. which is shut down till we can understand it. And after we understand it, we can control it a lot more better. Well, most persons criticize China, but really, it has turned out to be a better strategy yes. now. So let's, let's bring back home to Nigeria right now, um, the, to the amount of confirmed cases and the number of deaths so far. Mm -hmm. How would you rate it in percentages? Um, we're currently at about 2% now. Mm. We have 232 confirmed cases yes. and about 5 Five deaths. Five deaths. Yeah. Yes. And yes, so with respect to how Lagos is managing it or how Nigeria is managing it, I think we're doing a pretty good job. Yeah, because Lagos seems to be the epicenter right now in Nigeria. Yes, so, I mean, yeah. with more than 50% of the entire case, which is about 120. So, I mean, that's, that's the highest currently. So, most times we're always using Lagos to say, hey, okay, you know what, this is, um, this would be a representation of how Nigeria is handling, handling it. And Lagos has done pretty well. Okay, yes. so in your in your projections, um, what, what do you think? What's the likelihood of this percentage shooting up or um, reducing? I mean, given given all of the factors involved. Yes. So, given the shutdown in Lagos, in Lagos, we're beginning to see that curve get to its pivot. Then it starts coming down, okay. right? And that's basically just what it's what it is. So if we are supposed to make any calculated guess, which I do not have the capacity to do right now, but if we're supposed to make a calculated guess, we're giving, give or take, we're giving to, we are going to start seeing the numbers dropping within the next two weeks. All right. Yeah. Charles, Edo, thank you very much for joining us on News on the Hour. Thank you very much.